Five Radio. This is Paul Catalina's Top 5 at 555, presented by Champion Salon and Barber. To book your appointment, go to championsalonandbarber.com. All right, top five things the Bengals making the Super Bowl made me think. It's all kind of came to me in about a 30-second run after the game yesterday. Well, hey, man, hats off to the NFL for the last two weekends. Oh, yeah. God, I mean, yeah. they could not have scripted, scheduled, wish for any better last two playoff rounds than, than what they've got. I mean, if somehow they could just bottle that magic. But, uh, yeah, pretty incredible uh, the, how good these playoffs have been. Yeah. All right, number five. We are in the upside down. The Bengals have an owner who, again, is – kind of outside of it. And, you know, for a long time, he had Marvin Lewis, who was just doing the same thing, treading water for the longest time, didn't do anything about it. And and here they are. He hires a young guy, changes things up, and they're in the Super Bowl. Yeah, It's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. It did like the Bengals were not trying the way that other teams are trying. And then all of a sudden, they hit on Joe Burrow, they hit on Jamar Chase, and then it... Well, you keep saying that. I think that's unfair. I they they just were in a funk, like oh, a thirty yeah. year funk, like a thirty year funk. It didn't mean they weren't trying. I mean they were. Look, Marvin Lewis. They come in and Mike Brown and Marvin Lewis had this organizational philosophy of, uh, well, if they've been cut from the Cowboys for their behavior, which is bad. Oh no, we'll get them back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah. no, they. You know, they so that yeah. was what they were doing. It doesn't make any sense uh, what they were doing, but they're there now. Yeah, Marvin Lewis lost five wild card playoff games in a row at one point, and then the last five years they weren't even sniffing the playoffs, mm-hmm. and then yet here they are. And yeah, you know they beat Tennessee, and that was kind of improbable because Tennessee was a you know a top team, and then turn around win again. You're just like, huh? Uh, and and I I mean I don't know, man. Like I I was actually rooting for the Bengals. Like I guess if I was rooting in any way, I, I wanted to see the Bengals just for something a little bit new. And uh, I still didn't think that they were going to be able to beat the Chiefs, you know. And I'm not ready to think that they're going to beat the Rams. But if they did, would anybody be shocked no. by it at this point? Absolutely not. I have and no it, idea. Yeah. And if they did, nobody's going to be shocked by it because is there anyone swaggier than Joey B? No. I mean, he's a, he's a cold blooded killer. I mean, uh, and you know, the cigar after the LSU national championship, he was like, it was a picture of Jamar Chase and Joey, Joe Burrow's father, who played at Nebraska. Both out in the parking lots, lighting one up. Yeah. Oh, boy, do Nebraska fans talk about that mm-hmm. very much, that connection. Of yeah. like, I, hey, here's the other thing. Joe, Joe Burrow yesterday, somebody yeah. asked him about Ohio State, and he's like, I don't know why. He's like, you, you, it's where you, not where you start, it's where you finish. He's yeah. like, I'm an LSU Tiger. I don't know why Ohio State people try to claim me. He didn't play there. No, yeah, no, I, I don't think Ohio State folks should should claim him. Um, no. Yeah, he didn't play there. I mean, yeah, he was on the roster technically. He doesn't need to be on the graphic for Ohio State Buckeye. He didn't finish his career there, so I, I don't count that, even if he did start his career there. It's like if Quinn Ewers goes and wins big, is he going to get credit for being at Ohio State too? No, absolutely not. He shouldn't. So, But, yeah, I mean – I mean, it helps. The, the swaggy part helps because he's a white dude, you know, because there's plenty of swagged out uh, super athletes in the in the NFL. But, I mean, there, there's just something about him, you know, with the uh, just the, the way he carries himself and the way his teammates seem to love him and the way he just – there's just something – like there's just this <clears throat> invisible little thing that he has it. that's special, that it factor, yep. yeah, and – uh, it's pretty amazing to watch. It really is because we all know it. We all know it while we're watching it, and yet he just he keeps doing his thing. He, he, there's a story, and and uh, it, it's Bruce Feldman who wrote a story about Joe Burrow and some of the time the timeline. It's not like a long length. It's just certain things he did when he was younger at LSU, including telling Devin White to shut the blank up at a <laughs> practice one time, and he just kind of has that. You know, some guys have it. You don't raise your hand and say I'm a leader. You just kind of. You kind of know who, who they are when, they, when they're on, a, on your team. All right, number three, the path out of the cellar is two to three draft picks away. Honestly, I mean, there are five wins last year, even with Joe Burrow, and he did get hurt, hurt at the end of the year. Uh, but Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase completely mm. changed. The, and, and look, for T. Higgins was a first-round draft pick before. Man, and he so, made some top yeah, yeah, catches. Look, they've got uh, – look, <laughs> They've got some, quad, I'll call it quadruplets, uh, because you've got Jamar Chase, 
T. Higgins and wide receiver Joe Mixon, who has really, really had a fantastic season at running back, and Joe Burrow at quarterback. Yep, you're you're doing pretty well, and that, that's that's something you can build around. You get them some functional offensive linemen. Yep. I'm yep. not talking five Larry Allens here, but if you get the, and you know, you don't need Anthony Munoz all across the line again. If you get some better offensive line, that offense is going to really explode. Yeah, and you know what? The defense yesterday made plays. They they got after Mahomes. He was running for his life, sometimes running himself out of place. They played well enough. I, they did. Yeah. I, I was surprised by that. But yeah, that offensive line, they can work and tweak on that now in the offseason. Yeah, and they're going to have to, just for Joe Burrow's yeah. sake, they're going to have to do that. But uh, what did y'all think of uh, Mahomes' decision the pass no, the Tyree kill right before It made the no half? sense at all. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't see, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that every quarterback doesn't have a brain fart, whatever, but that's not something you would ever expect. Well, he was trying to get way too much, kick the field goal, and or throw the damn thing away or in the back of the end zone. Ross Tucker just talked about yeah, it on the interview yeah. where he said, "Look, that you know, there's he was right there on the sideline when it happened, and you throw the ball in the end zone, or you throw it out of the end zone. That's it. That's the only two things mm -hmm. you do to throw it in the flat. I know Tyree Kill is fast, but that's too greedy. That's what they wanted you, you got to greedy. do. Greedy, yeah, they got, you got greedy, greedy. And, and they got greedy. At, yeah, they got greedy. Yeah. That's what and they did. That felt too like a major turning oh, point no, when they got no that question. stop. It was like, oh wait that's, a second. And that's might, what he says. Yeah. And Zach Taylor was fired up. He was ready to go. All right, number two, if Mike Brown can get his team back in the Super Bowl, Jerry Jones is out of excuses. That's it. The Bengals are in. The Cowboys have no more excuses. Well, yeah, I know. Again, there's a list. There are the Browns, and there are the Lions, and then the next one's up are the Washington football team name, whoever. The Texans. And the Texans, yeah, because they, but as far as length but the, of time. But they haven't been, like the Texans and the Jaguars have never been, but they're – They've, they've not been around that 96 long. 96 or 95, yeah. That, it's the same timeline. Washington and Dallas are right there, right below the Browns and the Lions on the length of time I, of Super Bowl. I don't even think Jerry's making excuses anymore. Yeah. I mean, I think I think he's I think he's been out, and I think, you know, maybe the, the fans have excuses they can throw up there. Like, well, you know, some might say, well, Dak's not good enough, or the O-line's not good enough, or whatever's not good enough. Look, that that was not a good O-line that Cincinnati was playing with, and there yet they go. still found they found a way to win. So found a way to win. Yeah, and so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that missing piece is for the Cowboys. I really don't. They've tried literally everything at this point, but um, I mean they're at least still on the doorstep. But uh, yeah, the fact the Bengals could just bust through like that when Dallas has been so close so many times is frustrating. As frustrated as Jerry was watching the games a week ago. Imagine him watching Cincinnati punch a ticket to the Super Bowl. Yeah. All right, one more. All right, and number one. Man, the Lions really are the worst organization in the NFL. <laughs> like, they and the, the Bengals have been on parallel tracks for the longest time until Joe Burrow. You and know, the Lions played for a championship in 91. Yeah, but, like, I it's mean, just... the NFC. But it's just... They're just so bad. And, they yeah. like, every decision they make blows up in their face. Yeah, I saw a, I saw somebody basically say that, and then Jamel Hill. Uh, I does she is she from Detroit? Is she from? Uh, I think she's from Michigan, uh, if not from Detroit. But she like took it a certain kind of way, which I thought was odd, and tried to paint it completely different. And all the guy was really saying was like, "Yeah, they're just the worst organization." And I forget what that that conversation turned into, um, but I don't know. She was, I guess, trying to make it out like. They try and, and what, but like, spare me. Like, let's not, let's not make excuses for the Lions. They are a forgettable organization. I have nothing against them in any way, but they were only really relevant because Stafford was still on the team. And just because he was on the team, that's all you would really think about. And, and then, yeah, he, he leaves and, um, they're just there. I mean, really, yeah. they're just kind of there. This wasn't even just Stafford being on the Rams kind of thing. It was just that those two organizations, Cincinnati and Detroit, were essentially on parallel tracks for the longest time. They were they were right there, both of them making bad decisions. I mean, the Bengals, obviously, a little bit better than the Lions over that time, but not really. You know, Matthew Stafford's played in three wild card rounds over his career in Detroit, so not too far off of what Marvin Lewis and Mike Brown were doing in Cincinnati. But, man, they just, like... At every turn, the Lions just if they were on let's make a deal, it would just they would they would always like, all right, behind one door is all the money you'll ever need, and behind the second door is a chainsaw uh maniac. And they're like, ah, door number two, uh yeah, chainsaw maniac. A, a franchise that had Barry Sanders. Now some running backs play for bad teams, but Barry Sanders and they were in the ninety one state uh, NFC championship game with Eric Kramer. They'd beaten Dallas. 
I think in the wild card round, but when Dallas had Loffenberg or who would know, it wouldn't have been. Burline maybe was playing quarterback. Aikman was hurt. And that was it for them. And they've just not sniffed. Yeah, the Lions are one of those teams that got three straight top ten picks. And, you know, those guys might, you know, Jeffrey Akuda might be good or whatever. But, like, it's, you know, as far as making them count, they – they just get better players, yeah. but they don't become a better team, really. Yeah, and yeah it's a, they're just they're just an organization that's just kind of been there for a while now, and not really anything to to really point out or, or touch on much. It's just they're there. They're one of thirty two, and and they're normally number thirty one or thirty two. It, it seems like, uh, but yeah, that had to be somewhat painful. I'm sure Lions fans were happy for Stafford, but yeah. at the same time, a little bit like, yeah. oh, come on now. When we come back tomorrow at three o'clock, Carlos Silva writes for Texas or covers Texas Tech in Lubbock on their game with Texas. That's tomorrow. Also, we'll hear from Evan Miyakawa, nearly Dr. Miyakawa, on stats and all that kind of stuff, trending analytics with the men's basketball. Tonight, Beta West Virginia at 8. We'll discuss that as well. And